The unrelenting call of the wild courses through my body. The tremble of these fingers cannot be stopped. The real me. The facade of a man crumbles, and my true self awakens with a primal scream. So, instead of straight up lying to people or just having uninteresting gameplay comparisons, I'm simply going to be breaking down what differentiates each Bloody Roar game from another in one way or another with a little bit of fun facts sprinkled in between here and there. So, enjoy! Kicking off with the first game, ladies and gentlemen, here we have Bloody Roar. The main character, Yugo Ogami, as well as Garo, are searching for Yugo's father's whereabouts in hopes that he's in one of the tubes alive held at the evil organization, Tylon. But unfortunately, Garo lays down the news that Yugo's father is dead, and so, Yugo then makes it a goal to use his beast powers he's inherited from his father to carry his legacy. The main gimmick throughout this game, as well as every other Bloody Roar game, is that you turn into a powerful animal hybrid, a beast. There's a rave mechanic, which basically increases your frame data on attacks, which can result in more interesting juggles and or combos. However, in order to use it, you must be in beast form or else you won't be able to use it. And depending on how much juice you have left in your beast gauge will determine how long the rave will last for. So, use it wisely. Fun fact, in the Japanese version of Bloody Roar 1, Greg is a black man thanks to Japan's stereotyping. Meanwhile, in the American version, he's white. Also, the Japanese didn't know how to pronounce words with the letter L in them, so they referred to the evil organization as Tyron. And the reason why I know this is because if you select long on the character select screen, the announcer will shout his name out as wrong, which funnily enough is wrong. wrong. And the fact that they spelled Tylon as Tyron on the floor of the final boss fight with Yuriko or Uriko. Speaking of, her mother saves her in the canon. Uriko sacrificed herself to save Alice from getting brainwashed, which is why you fight her at the end of Arcade. No, you're not tripping. She indeed has a beast form where she turns into a powerful woman, and then a chimera. Now on to Bloody Roar 2. What makes this game distinct from the rest of the entries is its story mode. In this, you get a cool CGI opening of most of the characters you're familiar with in their own respective scenes. You pick a character, you get a summary of how zoanthropy works, what's happening now with said character since the previous title, then you go through their story, inevitably thwarting the ZLF. There's also widescreen support, which is wild to me since this game dropped in 1999. You can also unlock movies and pictures after playing through your characters' story modes, which I can appreciate. In terms of its gameplay, this is probably the most simplest game out of them all, just because there isn't a rave mode like there was in 1, so it makes fighting kinda traditional, I suppose. I mean, there is any castle point, so you can pull off some freestyle combos. So I guess this was their way of changing rave up. They added beast drives, which are basically special moves each character has, and you can either press a shoulder button or use the correct motion to execute it. A beast drive done with the shoulder button does less damage, while the quarter circle whatever one does more. So, it's a lot more rewarding. Visually, I think the game still holds up, and I love the fact that each character has their own theme, so it makes everyone very distinct and memorable. Something I forgot to mention that's in Bloody Wars 1 and 2 is that when you're hit, pressing forward at the right time will have you evade your opponent, leaving them open to be punished, if they don't run away. Fun fact, Yugo has a hidden rare winning animation where his beast form is its own being and it knocks him out for fun. Here we go.
Bloody Roar 3. Released in 2001 for the PlayStation 2, following up after its predecessor, it removed story mode, which kinda sucks, but the gameplay's still good. Plus, we get three new characters. We have Xion, or Xeon, who was Dante before Dante, and we get Uranus, which is basically Uriko from Bloody Roar 1, but what Uriko was supposed to be, and Koryu, which is Bakryu from Bloody Roar 1, but resurrected as a mechanical iron mole thing, since he melted at the end of his ending in the first game, but a separate division of Tylon gathered his liquefied remains, which retained his fighting style. But yeah, in terms of its gameplay, it's tight, responsive, and pretty damn fun. Evading isn't a sidestep around your opponent like in the prior two games, but rather a weave or bop. You do this by pressing forward and guard at the same time. And if timed correctly, you can punish with a high, mid, or low. Rave makes a comeback. Sort of. Hyper Beast is what the new rave is called. Once your beast drive is completely full, by pressing both R1 and L1, you will go into Hyper Beast. And your damage and speed is increased, you have auto recover, any cancel point, etc. You can only do it once though, so once it runs out, you can't go into your beast form anymore. Now with beast drives, all characters have an additional one, but in order to perform them, you do the quarter circle motion twice, but backwards, and then end it with the beast button. Speaking of, beast drives recover health too, so if you want to cheese a match when you're down by some health, use a beast drive to recover health. Do I think it's a good mechanic? Personally, nah, but to each their own I suppose. Bloody Roar Extreme, which was on the Xbox in America and GameCube in Japan. Now, don't get confused, this is Bloody Roar Primal Fury, it's just an updated re-release under a different name. And there is an additional character on here, Fang's his name, and he's Yugo's counterpart from the Bloody Roar manga, Bloody Roar The Fang. He plays like how Yugo used to play in Bloody Roars 1 and 2, mostly, and has his own beast drive based on an event from the manga, the Wolf Gang Silver Punches, or Gloves I think it's called. But enough about him. In terms of how extreme controls, this is honestly the most comfortable I've felt with every character. While 3 had tight controls, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were comfortable. In this, they are responsive and a bit more fluid. Might just be me, but I play this a lot more than Bloody Roar 3 just from how the characters feel alone. Oh yeah, there's Ganesha and Kronos too. Two new characters that only appear in this game. All of the characters either feel the same here or they've had a move or two replaced with something else or just had something outright removed. Regardless, if you played Bloody Roars 2 and 3, all of the characters will feel unchanged. There's just some adjusting you'd have to make. Hyper Beast in this game works differently compared to 3. You see, you can go Hyper Beast anytime you want. However, if you go Hyper Beast while your beast gauge is low, a lot of your health is sacrificed and you're not faster in movement this time around, so you can get punished easily. There are cancel points on the characters' moves, and each Hyper Beast form is character specific, meaning that they have traits. For Bakryu, it's more chip damage. For Alice, she hits harder. And Ganesha, he has super armor, so he has no hits done. You get the gist. The soundtrack is a little different from its previous entries, but overall I'd still say that the soundtrack is good. Now on to the last game in the series. Bloody Roar 4. This game ultimately tanked the series in terms of, well, just about everything. The marketing was garbage, and it's so pretty trash, especially considering that they released this along with Bloody Roar Extreme on the same day in Europe. The gameplay may look similar, but I'ma just let this brief clip do the talking. See that? Basically, this game's mindset is that you have to be in beast form at all times without strategically planning when to transform into it like in the prior games, so when your normal health meter is empty, you're not actually KO'd because your beast gauge is also your health bar. This is very annoying simply due to the fact that if I want to juggle someone or even do a 6-7 to seven hit combo or more, they'll just automatically transform back into their beast form, which ruins the flow of my fighting. By holding circle, the character will power up Dragon Ball Z style, then transform into their respective beast forms, but in trade, your health is sacrificed, so it tries to balance it out, but even when your normal health is gone, you are still in your beast form. Let's say you finish the match in survival, but you barely have any health left during the next match, or you're somehow playing this game with someone on versus, and you're very low on health. 
don't worry not only is it a beast gauge but also a second health bar and when you hit someone in human form it fills up so not only did you just refill your health by hitting a nigga you also have juice to transform which is dumb because it contradicts how the beast mechanic worked in the previous games you want to know another contradiction this they called Uriko the cat when she is a half beast this is a misconception because the reason why she is a half beast as established in bloody roar 2 is because the surgical procedure she went through in bloody roar 1 made her unable to morph into her beast form completely she is a half beast because she has her human hair while in her beast form notice how sheena gato and long are all some type of feline uriko is just a cat yeah she's a cat but what type of cat I know it may seem like I'm overreacting here, but to change what made her so distinct for this is kind of baffling. Essentially, they just made my favorite character less unique and more generic. Speaking of, the announcer's generic is Dick. Shenlong, the Tiger, final round. Get ready, fight! The character select screen is bland. Nagi is the first one here and not Yugo, you know, the main protagonist of the Bloody Roar series. I mean, like, she's everywhere. She's on this, she's on that, she's on this. What the fuck? She is the first slice of bread on a loaf. She is flat in design inside and out. They use the same character models from Bloody Roar Extreme. The UI looks awful compared to the prior games. There are force fields on the stages, so ring outs or final walls are non-existent. The stages are as dark as this nigga. The soundtrack is a feather and a stick on a plate compared to the entries prior. The motion capture on the characters are not good. And overall, this game's presentation is extremely low compared to the entries prior, and it's very clear that this game was rushed yet the footage you're seeing is the Japanese version I'm playing which is a slightly better version than its American release in terms of its voice acting and survival mode they did bring back blood and the evading mechanic from bloody roars 1 and 2 but only specific characters can do that long Jenny and Gato from what I played which is weird probably because it was rushed oh yeah if you're holding the evade button at the right time when you're being attacked you will dodge everything except grabs you can counter at the evading with just the press of a punch or kick though. I'm not going to cover everything in regards to this title because it's too much of a headache and I'd rather not waste my or your time talking about how objectively bad this one is. Anyone that likes this game only played this as their first Bloody Roar game. If you're not feeling too great one day, pop this into your PS2 instead of popping pills. Or if you know someone you despise or you are starting to despise, rightfully so, send them this game. Whew. Okay, I think I'm done talking about that mess. If you want to help me in growing the community for Bloody Roar, be sure to check out the revival plan video I did. Join the Bloody Roar Discord and follow me on Twitter as I am pushing for this series very hard to get its name relevant again. Be it by having Bloody Roar Extreme or any of the entries prior, have a good competitive scene, or having a new game. This has been the legacy and downfall of Bloody Roar. Thanks for watching.